Hello everyone and welcome back to the sessions on equity valuation. Now in continuation of our discussion on equity valuation, we are going to talk about valuation of equity through H model. This is something really important. Let me tell you what was the need to introduce a model like H model and what is the advantage of using this model. See before you learn any model in financial management, you should always know the significance of that or the need for creating such a model. That need is the root cause. If you know why there was such kind of model needed, its utility and its application will be easily understandable. So let us talk about uh, again Gordon's model of valuing equity. So Gordon's model initially starts with a constant growth assumption and the growth is expected to be a sustainable growth and that growth is determined through the product of return on equity and retention ratio. You know it very well. We have learnt it in the past. However, what would happen when there is a variable growth means dividends may not grow at constant rate throughout. Dividends may grow at a varying rate. That means the growth rate is not constant. In that case, we have learnt within Gordon's model itself the concept of supernormal growth where we have taken the discussion into two different categories, the two stage DDM that is two stage dividend discount model and three stage dividend discount model. So two stage dividend discount model emphasizes on what that one stage will be the stage of high growth and the second stage will be the stage of sustainable growth. For example, the high growth is say 20% every year and the sustainable growth rate is 12% every year. So for say initial 4 years you have high growth that is at the rate of 20% and from 5th year onward you have sustainable growth of 12%. That is what we have learnt under 2 stage dividend discount model. Now what happens in real life you would experience that the growth rate which was 20% may not suddenly decline to 12% there may be a gradual decline. I am sure you agree with me, right? There may be a gradual decline, a gradual decline from 20% to 12%. And therefore, we have a need for a three stage dividend discount model. The first stage will be the stage of high growth. The second stage is the intermediary stage or the transition phase where there will be a transition from high growth to a sustainable growth. So gradually from 20% growth rate, the growth rate may start declining linearly say 20, 19, 18, 17, 16 and so on up to the point when it reaches 12% and then 12% onward it will be sustainable growth. So we have three stage dividend discount model. Now you know what happens in that transition phase? in that transition where gradually dividends growth rate is declining from 20% to 19% to 18% to 17%. What we always do is we compute the next year's expected dividend by adjusting the growth rate that we are expecting. So we compute D1, D2, D3, D4, D5 all the possible dividends and at a particular phase we will be arriving at the terminal value of the share correct by following the constant growth formula of Gordon where the growth rate comes to the normal growth rate correct. But what happens in the transition phase sometimes your calculations could be very long if I say that the phase of transition goes for 10 years and what happens? 10 years you keep adjusting small small growth rate in your dividends to compute the expected dividends for the transition phase of 10 years and then compute the present value of all these dividends. It is not complicated to do but it is time consuming agreed. 
now what happens at home when you are sitting you can put the calculation on excel and compute the present value but in examination there is no excel in examination you will have to do the calculation and arrive at the answer that time h model has been introduced to arrive at an approximation so mind it huh? the real calculations are done through the individual present values of each expected dividend amounts including the present value of the terminal value on the other side the valuation through h model may give you approximation what is the disadvantage in this approximation that the values may not match exactly but it will still be very close but do you know what is the advantage your tds calculations becomes considerably lower and you quickly get the answer that is the advantage of applying h model so what i am going to do purposely i'll be taking a few examples where i'll be solving questions without the h model and with h model so that you can have comparison and you'll find that the end result has some small variation but it is always quick for you to apply the h model so let me first provide some initial notes to you and then you start dealing with the application of h model so please write up these important notes what i display on screen and then i take you ahead the earnings growth of most firms does not abruptly change from a high growth rate to a low rate as in two stage model but tends to decline over time as competitive forces come into play the h model approximates the value of a firm assuming an initially high rate of growth declines linearly over a specified period so please write up these couple of paragraphs and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and now we write up the formula for h model you can define all these variables now this formula may appear to be little complicated for you but it is not like that it is indeed very simple so you can write the heading that the formula for this approximation is then you write the formula you define all the variables and once we move on to some calculative examples you will come to know the application of this formula and you will understand that this formula has a great advantage because the calculations become quick so quickly write down this formula and the meaning of all these variables and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us uh, take up an example to understand the application of h model that is example number 1 see what is given here z inc currently pays dividend of 3 dollars the growth rate which is currently 20% is expected to decline linearly over the next 4 years to a stable rate of 16% thereafter the required return is 25% calculate the current value of z inc so now if you have read this question you should be very clear with the information given z inc currently pays dividend of 3 dollars means this itself is d0 correct and initially the growth rate is 20% which is going to decline linearly over the next 4 years to 16% and thereafter 16% will continue so you know how do you attempt the calculation over here d1 will be 3 dollars into 1.2 that is dollar 3.6 d2 will be 3.6 dollars into 1.19 now see the growth rate has declined from 20% to 19% then d3 will be the d2 value that is 4.284 dollars into 1.18 look at the constant decline in the growth rate 
20 percent, 19 percent, 18 percent. By far, D3 has come to dollar 5.055. D4 will be the D3 value into 1.17. And after 4 years, the growth rate will stabilize to 16 percent. So, let us compute D5 as well. So, D5 will be the D4 value that is 5.914 dollars into 1.16. We computed D5 only with one objective that is to compute the P4 value. P4 value will be D5 divided by Ke minus G. Now, look at one thing. We are able to apply this Gordon's model for determining the value of equity only and only because this particular growth rate over here has become stable. So, P4 will be D5 divided by Ke minus G. When you make this calculation, what you get is the P4 value as $76.23. Please write up these calculations and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and now we make the simple calculation. So, we have 4 years in picture 1, 2, 3, 4 and 4. We write 4 years twice 1 for D4 and 1 for P4. So, let us identify the dividend and the share value cash flows for the next 4 years that is D1, D2, D3, D4 and P4. The present value factors will be at 25 percent. So, which you can easily compute. Keep in mind fourth year your discount factors will be same because both are at the same point of time and when you multiply these discount factors to your cash flows you will be getting the PV of cash flows. When you sum up all these all you get is $41.856. So, please write up this whole thing and then I will show you the application of H model. Alright friends, uh, once you have completed writing this whole thing, let us move ahead and take up the calculations further. Here we are going for application of H model. So, you write in your notebooks applying the H model. Now, this is the formula that you need to apply for H model. Now, earlier when you wrote this formula and you have defined the variables, I did not explain this formula to you. Let me now provide the required explanation. So, first of all, certain variables you will understand easily. D0, you know it very well, right? Now, 1 plus GL. Now, GL is talking about the stable growth rate that you experience after 4 years which is low growth correct or the growth for the long term. It is the long term growth rate which is the lower growth rate. So, D0 into 1 plus that constant growth rate or long term growth rate divided by Ke minus G that is again G standing for the long term growth rate and the second term over here is D0 again same D0 you have to take here in the second term. Now, this H, what is the meaning of this H that you need to understand? You have to focus on what was the period of the constant decline in the growth rate. The period of the constant decline in the growth rate from 20 percent to 16 percent, where it landed from 20 to 19, 19 to 18, 18 to 17 and 17 to 16. It took 4 years time. So, 4 years is the term H, the term variable h is half of the term means half of 4 years that is 2 years. So, what you are going to do? You are going to take d0 into half of the period or the term for the linear decline. So, it will be half of 4 that will be 2. So, it will be d0 into 2 into gs minus gl means it is the difference between the short term growth rate and long term growth rate. So, short term growth rate will be generally higher. So, we are taking that difference. So, G s minus G l will be 20 percent minus 16 percent or 0 0.20 minus 0 0.16 that will be 0 0.04 and the whole thing will be divided by K e minus G l means your denominator for this term and this term both are same. 
the difference between your expected return and the long term growth rate is going to be your denominator. Do you know what will happen? This calculation will lead to an approximate value which will match approximately with the calculation that you have done. Okay? I will show the calculations in a while, but important thing I want you to understand the implication of H model very clearly. See here this particular term it computes the value of share assuming that the growth rate had been constant from the beginning. That means look at all the growth rates that we are using in this term are only the long term growth rates as if 16 percent growth rate had been prevailing right from the beginning. This will give you the simplest application of only and only the Gordon's model part, but it is incomplete because it has not accommodated the high growth period. So, what happens under Gordon's model you do not apply this thing at the beginning you apply this thing at fourth year that is why we have computed P4 or V4 correct and then you take D1, D2, D3, D4 and P4 then discount it to their present value. So, Gordon's model becomes longer here if you apply that only right from the beginning then Gordon's model will give you only this part now, this is an additional term which shows you approximate enhancement in the value of the share which arises because of high growth. So, this is the term that gives you the value of the share without high growth and this is the effect of high growth. So, you actually observe that how much would have been the value of the share without high growth and what is the effect approximate effect of that high growth then take aggregate and you get the entire V0 value. So, guys when I ask you to write down this whole thing be careful about each and every variable and the application of this formula do not just copy and apply you understand and write down everything over here. So, let us first define all these variables what is H, H is T by 2 that is half of life in years that is of the high growth period, high growth period or basically the period for which the decline or the linear decline is experienced. So, in our case it will be 4 years divided by 2. So, T will be 4 years and divide by 2. So, H value will be 2 that is 4 by 2 equal to 2. Then T is the length of the high growth period which is 4 years in our case. G S is the short term growth rate and G L is the long term growth rate. K E is the required rate of return. So, please write up these uh, content and then I take you ahead. Alright friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and continue further applying the H model we are just substituting the values as I have explained and when you make the calculation you get two different values the first term results into this value 38.667 dollars this would have been the value if there was no high growth and 2.666 is the value that you are getting because of the high growth involved. Aggregate of these two will give you the approximate value of the share at present. Look at this 41.333 originally we got 41.856 correct 41.856 dollars but here it is 41.333 this is not the accurate calculation H model is a model of approximation. But have you noticed one thing just by this much calculation you are getting the result instantly that is the beauty of H model. So, let us uh, write even an important note over here the first term is what the shares would be worth if there were no high growth period and the perpetual growth rate was G L that is 16 percent in our example. So, if there was no high growth and the perpetual growth rate is 16 percent then the value of shares would have been only 38.667 dollars. The second term that is this term this whole term 
is an approximation of additional value that results from the high growth period. So please write up this calculation as well as this concluding note and then I take you ahead. All right friends, once you have completed writing this whole thing, let us uh, move ahead. And now what we are discussing will be the application of H model not in two stages, but three stage dividend discount model. If you observe the couple of examples that we have just taken were actually dealing with two stages only uh, high growth and low growth or you can call it the declining growth and then the stable growth or you can even split it as the short term growth and long term growth. In reality when we have talked about three stages, how would you apply H model in the situation where it is three stage variation in growth rate. So let us understand what will be those three stages fundamentally. First stage will be the stage of high growth. Say for the initial three years there is a high growth say 20%. That will be a constant high growth 20 percent, 20 percent, 20 percent. Then suppose for the next three years there is a constant decline say from 20 to 18, 18 to 16 and 16 to 14 and thereafter 14 percent constantly applies. So 14 percent is a sustainable growth rate. So guys Gordon's model you have learnt in varying growth situations under the head super normal growth rate where we have dealt with questions where you first compute D1, D2, D3 for that high growth then continue to compute D4, D5, D6 in that declining stage as well but D6 becomes constant correct or D7 becomes constant whatever you compute D7 and based on that you arrive at P6 then D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 and P6 you convert everything into present value task done but it will be quite long calculation. When you have to apply H model in that scenario H model is not for the three stage formula I mean it cannot compute the three stage calculation directly you will have to make it in two stages or in two parts I would say. So please understand one thing based on examples that you have covered with me earlier by applying H model what did you learn the first stage over there that you are considering is the stage of the declining growth rate where there is a constant decline from high growth to a low growth or from a short term growth to a long term growth. But what will happen when it is a three stage scenario? You will have to split the whole calculation into two parts. So once again if I put the example this way, initial three years it is high growth. Then next three years it is a declining phase and seventh year onward you have constant growth. So when you compute D1, D2, D3 it will be 20 percent, 20 percent, 20 percent growth. Then D4 will be based on 18 percent growth. D5 will be based on 16 percent growth. D6 will be based on 14 percent growth and so on. So actually speaking you make the computation of not P0 directly through H model. You will first compute P3 value that is V3 the third year value you compute correct because from third year it is a declining phase and then the sustainable growth period. Once again I would repeat after three years in my example there will be a decline and then there will be a constant growth. So you pick only that portion and you compute the present value but that present value what you compute will not be V0 value it will be V3 value then V3 you need to drag to V0 that will be a second round of calculation. Then what you do is 
with that high growth of 20 percent compute d1 d2 d3 and v3 you have already computed put all in one table and compute the present value that will give you the application of h model over three stage dividend discount model i'm sure you are clear with this what i'm going to do is one of the questions which i have already solved for you in the earlier classes that was a question on three stage dividend discount model i'll just put forward that same question once again i will show you the entire calculation what you have done earlier that you don't have to write that you don't have to redo because you have done it already but just go through that so that you recall what we computed over there and then for a comparative solution i will provide the solution through h model so that you get a one to one comparison of what answer you got without the application of h model and what answer you are getting with application of h model so please carefully listen to me the solution of that question the earlier part you need not write you can just have a reference to that particular question for your reference it was question number 12 of your book question number 12 of your book which i am going to put it forward once again i'll just discuss it that why and how you are going to apply h model so the focus point is not to solve that question 12 with the traditional approach but to learn how to apply h model over there that will be the complete understanding of h model so let me bring forward that in this discussion under the head example 3 so what i have displayed over here you can check in your textbooks this is question number 12 given in your textbook just check and confirm am i right it is question number 12 which you have already solved earlier okay and uh, now let me read and explain this to you and show you how to apply the h model over here let us read it it says an investor is considering to purchase the equity shares of lx limited whose current market price is rupees 112 the company is proposing a dividend of rupees 4 for the next year lx limited is expected to grow at 20% per annum for the next 4 years but guys one thing uh, this line the company is proposing a dividend of rupees 4 that means this itself is d1 huh? this is not d0 that means this has been computed after considering the 20% growth for the first year so from now the dividends will grow at 20% for the next 4 years that means this is the high growth stage the growth will decline linearly to 16% per annum after the first 4 years thereafter it will stabilize at 16% per annum indefinitely so we have clearly the three phases the first phase of 4 years where the growth rate will be 20% each year so 20% 20% 20% 20% thereafter from 20% there will be a linear decline so where they have not specified the number of years we can simply consider a gradual decline from 20 to 16 year after year so it will be from 20 to 19 from 19 to 18 from 18 to 17 and then from 17 to 16 so that will be the decline phase and then 16% over here will be considered as a sustainable growth rate which will be perpetual growth rate so when you have to apply h model you cannot apply h model for the first 4 years now you will have to apply the h model at that point from where the decline begins correct apply h model as if you are solving a question of h model only then you would get not v0 value you will be getting the v4 value then you consider d1 d2 d3 d4 and the computed value of v4 put it in the table apply the present value calculation and compute the present value of all these components you get your answer i am showing you the calculation of the whole thing without application of h model the solution of which you have already written and then i'll put forward the solution as per h model so let us uh, 
move to the solution without wasting a moment. So, traditionally the V0 value without application of H model will be simply the present value of all the cash flows from D1, D2, D3, D4, then D5, then D6 and then D7 and then P7 all these cash flows to be discounted to their present values and how would you compute P7 you know it already here you can apply Gordon's model and compute P7 by taking D8 divided by Ke minus G as we have already written this version of solution this what I am displaying on screen is just for your reference you do not even have to write about it you can just refer you have already written this solution earlier moving forward we would compute all the dividends. So, D1 is already given to you correct I told you that it is the expected dividend for the first year as rupees 4. So, you do not have to compute D1, D2, D3 and D4 will be computed by adding 20 percent growths. So, the high growth of 4 years is already over computing 20 percent, 20 percent, 20 percent was needed over here that is adding the growth of 20 percent was needed over here this was already adjusted and given to you but effectively you have considered the initial four years of high growth from the fifth year the decline begins so d5 will be 6.91 plus 19 percent then d6 will be the d5 value plus 18 percent d7 will be d6 value plus 17 percent d8 will be d7 value plus 16 percent and now based on D8 you are going to compute P7 and you know how to compute P7 using Gordon's model and the P7 value once you get you are all set with all the future cash flows from D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7 do not consider D8 but instead after D7 you consider P7. So, for the next 7 years whatever cash flows are expected you plot these cash flows into this table and compute the present value you will be getting your final answer. This is something that you have already done. So, just for your reference the problem with this calculation approach is this takes little longer time and that is why introduction of H model will ease out your calculations. So, V0 value what you are getting originally is rupees 114.91. Now, let us go for application of H model. It is this part of the solution that you need to start writing. So, first thing that you have to do is apply the H model formula, define all the variables, but keep in mind one thing the H model formula what you have written is indicating V0 value correct, but we are not going to compute V0 directly we are going to first compute V4. So, first you write this formula and the variables over here and then I take you ahead. Alright friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and apply the calculation for computing not V0, but V4. So, instead of V0 and D0 we are taking V4 and D4 correct and now the short term growth was 20 percent the long term growth is 16 percent. So, the decline from 20 to 16 will be for the next 4 years. So, H will be half of the 4 years that will be 2. So, let us make the calculations. We have just substituted the values and obtained V4 value as rupees 214.21. So, please write up this calculation and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, now that you have made this calculation already, let us move ahead and you make a table. We have already computed the 
d1 d2 d3 and d4 values d1 was already given in the question d2 d3 d4 you have computed and v4 we just computed through h model now all these cash flows we will discount at 20 percent because that is your discounting rate in the question and when you make these calculations all these present values sum up to rupees 116.57 as your final answer so notice one thing without the application of h model it was what 114.91 i guess was it can somebody confirm it was 114.91 and with application of h model it is 116.57 so you don't get exactly the same but your calculations approximate what otherwise you would have got it without application of h model so i'm sure with these explanations and these examples on h model you are crystal clear with the application of h model in two stage ddm as well as three stage ddm so take note of this whole thing and that will be end of the solution as well as end of this session